Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example on impulse and momentum. In this case, we're going to try to find the impulse and the final velocity of an object after it's been, uh, after it's been subjected to a force. Uh, and the force in this case is going to be a varying force, a force that varies over time. So what we're going to do here is find the graphical solution to the impulse and then use that to find the change in momentum that will allow us to find the change in velocity. Ultimately, what we're trying to find here is V final of the object. So here we have a four kilogram object and we're applying a force to the object for a short amount of time. The force will have an equation A sine of xt and A will be 2000 newtons times the sine of 1000 pi per second times t. Well if you work that out correctly that means that the contact period is about one millisecond so this is only valid for one millisecond. If you grab that equation uh, force versus time, it will look like this. So we have force on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis, and the force will look like a sine wave, or at least one portion of a sine wave like that, where we go from zero to 0 0.001 seconds, which of course is a millisecond. And the impulse then would be the area underneath this curve. So impulse would be equal to the area underneath this curve, and we also know that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum, which is equal to the change in the mass times the velocity, which is equal to the, well, actually, what we should write, this is, I'm running out of room there, let me go over here, which is equal to the mass times the change in velocity, because the mass doesn't change, only the velocity changes, which is equal to the mass times V final minus V initial, and that is equal to the impulse. So the, mech the, um, the way we're going to solve this problem is, since we're looking for V final, and we're given V initial, oh no, V initial here, let's say that V initial is equal to zero, because the ball will start at rest, so that will be zero. We know the mass, but we need to find the impulse to find the final velocity, and the impulse will be found by finding the area underneath this curve. Remember, the function here is defined, F is defined as 2,000 newtons, oh, 2,000, not 200 newtons, 2,000 newtons times the sine of 1,000 pi per second times t, which is this function right there. So we have to find the area underneath the curve. How do we do that? Well, what we do is we take a small little strip of area, small little strip like this. There we go. And we call that a small dA, a small little slice of the total area. And how do we find that? Well, the area of that, since it's a small little rectangle, it's going to be height times the width. And the width is going to be a small change in time. So this is going to be the height, which is the force at that moment in time, times the width dt. And that will then be defined as a small little area here. So if we want to find the whole area, well, we're going to slice this up in an infinite number of little slices. We're going to add them all up, and of course, that's known as integration. So therefore, we can say that the total area, which of course will be equal to the impulse, is equal to the integral of all the little d areas. So we're going to sum them all up. That's what we call integration, which is equal to the integral of the force times dt and the time going from 0 to 0 0.001 seconds, which is a millisecond. So we integrate it over that time. All right, so let's come over here because we'll have a lot of room on that side of the board and write that integral. So the impulse, which is equal to the area, which is equal to the integral of the force. And notice that the force is defined as 2,000 newtons. I'll leave out the units for now. So 2,000 times the sine of 1,000 pi times t times dt. Notice that this here is the small little area. Um, well, the whole thing. The whole thing here is my dA. My dA is simply the force times dt. So this here represents that small little slice. I'm going to integrate it all the way from 0 to 0 0.001 seconds. All right, now 2,000 is a constant. That can come outside the integral sign. So we can say that I is equal to um, 2,000 times the integral of the sine of 1,000 pi times t dt from 0 to 0 0.001. All right, so now we have the sine of an angle times dt. In order to integrate that, we have to have the proper differential. The proper differential of the angle um, would be 1,000 pi. 
So since we don't have a 1000 pi dt, we have to add that. We have to multiply this times 1000 pi, and then we have to divide this by 1000 pi. So now we have the sine of theta d theta, so to speak, right? So when you want to integrate that, you want to make sure you have the proper differential. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and integrate that. So what is the sine of 1000 pi t? Of course, the integral of the sine is the negative cosine. So this would be equal to uh, 2 over pi times the, uh, let's see here, times uh, when we integrate that, we have times the cosine, the negative cosine of 1000 pi times t, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 0 0.001. All right. So we have the negative here. I'm going to take the negative out of here and put that in front here so we don't lose it. Now we plug in the upper limit and I'm going to subtract when we plug in the lower limit. So this will be equal to negative 2 over pi times. And uh, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 0 0.001 times 1,000. That will negate the 1,000 um, and we're left with the cosine of pi. So this will leave us with the cosine of pi minus when we plug in the lower limit. Well, of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0 to be cosine of 0. And the cosine of pi is negative 1, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So it's negative 1 minus a 1, that will be negative 2. So it will leave us with minus 2 over pi times negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. And negative 2 times negative 2, that would be a positive 4 divided by pi. And that would be the impulse imparted on that object. Okay, so once we know the impulse, we can come back over here. So now that we know the impulse, we can find v final, know of course that v initial is equal to zero. So here we can then say that uh, i is equal to m times v final minus zero, because that's zero, and we multiply m times v final. So we say that v final is equal to the impulse divided by the mass, and the impulse we found is four divided by pi, and the mass is uh, four kilograms, which means that the velocity final will be 1 over pi, and of course the units will be meters per second. And there is our answer. Be careful, let's not get confused here with the stuff right underneath it. So, and that's how we do that. Again, uh, to exemplify, we can represent the impulse as simply the area underneath the force function as a function of time. So we have force as a function of time here represented by this curve. In this case, it's a, a portion of a sine curve. We want to find the area underneath. We do that by taking a small little slice. The slice is a small dA, which is equal to the force, which is the height of the slice, times the width, which is a small little dt. So you can think of it as the width being a small little dt, and the height being the height of the function, which would be f. So therefore, the dA is f times dt. And if we want to find the total area, we sum them all up, which is the integration of f dt. Of course, then for f, we plug what f is equal to, which is right here, times dt. And of course, when we want to integrate that, this is a constant which comes outside the integral sign, and we have the sine of an angle times dt. Well, actually, we want the proper differential, which means we need to have a thousand pi here in front of the dt, which means we multiply this times a thousand pi and divide by a thousand pi so that we don't change the problem. But now we have a proper differential in the integral. We cannot take the integral of that. The integral of that is the minus the cosine. I place the minus over here. Two thousand divided by a thousand is two times the cosine of pi t. When we plug in the upper limit, we get the cosine of pi. When we plug in the lower limit, we get the cosine of zero. When we work that out, we get an impulse of four divided by pi. So now we know that the impulse, which is equal to m times v final, since we started with zero velocity initially, uh, we can then solve this for v final. v final is the impulse divided by m. Impulse four over pi is what we found by doing the integral, which is equal to the area underneath that curve. Divided by the mass, we get 1 over pi meters per second, and that's our answer. That is the final velocity of that object after it's been, uh, uh, when it's been pushed by a force that changes with time the way we indicated. That's how we do that.